PubMed is a great searchable database for accessing scientific literature, but searching for research manuscripts and papers can be very time consuming. Adding multiple criteria to your search can add an additional layer of complexity and time, and I'm just doing one search here, but what if I could do nine searches in the same amount of time? Or better yet, what if I could do a hundred different searches with less effort? Well, don't worry, that's exactly what I'm going to show you today in this video. We're going to use a little Python to do this, so with that, let's just get right into it. All right, before we start getting into the code, let's make sure that we have the module we need for this script here. So I'm going to type in CMD here to get to the command prompt in Windows. And we're going to be working with a few here. So pip install pandas and bio for biopython. Now we're going to also be using the time module, but that comes included with Python. So we don't have to worry about that. All right, so I already have this installed, so no worries there. But I just want to show you in case you don't have these. Okay, the first thing we want to do is just open Python. And let's go to File, New File. Let's save this to the directory that we want to work in. This is mine right here. We can just call this PubMed, whatever you want to call it. Hit Save. And I'm going to import the code to save us time. But don't worry, I'm going to provide this in the video description, so you'll be good. All right, let's start with our date function. Dates could be incomplete in different formats or just missing altogether. So we have this function right here to help us best extract the publication date. So ideally we would get month, year, and day, but we don't always get that. Sometimes we get bits and pieces of that. So this right here, this extracts the year. If we don't have a month, it'll just default to the first one. If we don't have a day, it'll default to the first day, just so we have something, just so we can have a full complete date. Now, if we have none of those, we're just gonna get this statement right here that says not available. So you might be wondering, what's this email right here? Well, here's some context. So with Bio or BioPython, we're gonna be using a tool from the National Center for Biotechnology Information, or NCBI, called the Entree Programming Utilities. So this is for automated querying of their databases like PubMed. Typically, you can make three requests per second, but if you're gonna need more, you need to get an API key, and you can get that by creating an NCBI account. It's free, but this will allow you to get 10 requests per second. Now, most people aren't gonna need that. Three is plenty for most people. But if you do need that many requests, this is where you put your email and this is where you put your API key. But if you just need three requests, like I said, most people, you can just put your email right here. And the reason we have this email is they just wanna be able to get in touch with you in case something goes wrong or perhaps you're being too aggressive with your requests and they can warn you. So if you put in a fake email, let's say you run it with this, you might get your IP address banned, so don't do that. There are plenty of things that you can query, but just for simplicity, I did authors and topics here. And I tried to have some authors that you might be familiar with. So Brian Holland here might not sound familiar by name, but he's actually the lead singer of The Offspring. And he has a PhD from the University of Southern California, and he does research when he can. There's Dr. Oz here. You might know him from his TV show. And Anthony Fauci, who was a household name during the pandemic. So you can see I have three authors and three topics. So that's gonna be a total of nine different searches based on these different combinations. Now you can add to this, you can take all the topics out, for example, if you want to, and it's still gonna work. I try to set this up so it could be very flexible. I have some dates here just to filter our results and make sure that we don't have too many. I just wanna make this relatively quick, but you can expand this as needed. Now this section here looks complicated, but it actually isn't. So right here, we're creating a list called individual queries. And basically, if we have authors and topics, it's going to throw the query into this individual queries list. If we just have authors and we have no topics, it'll throw it in there. And that's the query right there. If we just have topics, it's going to throw that into there. And if we have none of these, it's going to at least throw in the date range. So we have something there. That's going to throw that into there. And then down here is where it's going to start to loop through. And I'll get to that in a second. So right here, we're just creating our data frame and we need this to export and store our data. So that's very important. That's where the whole pandas thing comes in. All right, let's scroll down a little bit here just so we can see the rest of the code here. So this is where we're gonna start processing each query individually, all right? So we're defining our databases PubMed right there. And query, that's going through our list that I was just telling you about. So we're gonna loop through that. And this right here, this is the number that we want for each query request. So maybe we can just start with one. We can keep it a little bit small and we can expand it later. Now this right here, 
I commented this out, but basically if you want to see each query, it'll print it and then you can have a look at it. So I'm just going to show you real quick here what this might look like. You see all the queries right here. And I'll talk about this in a second. It's not a big deal. It'll still work. All right, I'm going to go back to commenting that out. And so we're going to get each PMID as part of this process. And then we're going to go through those PMIDs. And that's the unique identifier that helps you find the manuscript or research article. All right. And so now that we have those, we're going to go through each PMID. And that's where we're going to start getting our data. All right. So we're going to retrieve this based on the PMID. And it's going to be an XML format here. And we're going to start reading the records. And we're going to get stuff from the records. Now, again, if you want to print the article here, you can have a look at the data. It might look a little daunting at first, but essentially it's like JSON data where you have to parse through it. So you can kind of see the different nests and all that. I'm gonna stop this though before it gets too crazy. If this XML looks like total madness, don't worry. Once we get to the end of the code, I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna show you a way to make this so much easier to look at and figure out how to extract certain data pieces. But basically, we have to look at the XML structure, for example, and then we, we can look for key information here. And I did most of the work here for you so you can see how the nests work. And you can see the main piece here is this article, which starts with Medline Citation. And we're going to get the title, the abstract, the list of authors. And here, we're doing a little bit of join here. We're getting two little pieces. We're getting the forename and the last name. If you want to switch these around, that's fine, too, if you'd rather have the last name first. Either way, we're doing the same thing with the journal the keywords, and this pub date, that goes back to what we had up here, this function, okay? And the URL is actually pretty simple. We have a base URL, which is this, and you just add the PMID, and that's the URL for the abstract. Now, you might notice at the end, I have this else statement, and sometimes certain things are missing here. Abstracts are missing a lot. Keywords are missing a lot. You don't typically find journals or author lists missing, but I have a mechanism just in case. So it'll say author is not available, for example, or the keywords not in this app. And then right here, based on this information that we got right here, we're defining the field in our data set. So PMID is going to be in all caps. That's going to be based on this right here, our title, for example, this right here, and so on. You can kind of see how that works. And we're going to put it all together. Now I have this right here, and I don't want to overwhelm the server. And so what we're doing is, is between each query, we have a slight delay. It's a good way to make sure you don't get your IP address blocked. Now, since we're doing multiple searches, there's a strong likelihood that we're going to get some duplicates here. And so since we know PMID is unique, if we see more than one PMID, that means it's a duplicate and we're going to drop it. And then when we're ready, we're going to go ahead and export our data to an Excel file. You can do it to a CSV, an HTML file, basically anything that Pandas lets you do. But I just like to keep it simple with Excel format. All right, if we're ready, let's just go ahead and run this. All right, so here's this thing again. If you're seeing the message, don't worry. It's basically a reminder from BioPython about good coding practices. And it's telling you that importing BioPython within its source directory might cause some issues. But if it's working, it's really nothing to worry about, especially with the kind of beginner type stuff that we're doing here. If I run this in Spider or anything in the Anaconda framework, I don't have any issues. I don't get that message. You know, I guess it just depends on lots of factors. It doesn't bother me, though. And clearly, this has been an issue for other people, too. Here's a GitHub page right here. You can see someone's talking about this and some alternatives and resolutions. But honestly, if it works, it doesn't really bother me. And if nothing looks weird with the results, I'm okay with it. Let's take a look at what we got here. Okay, so we got five results. Why don't we beef it up a little bit and see what we can get. All right, so you see this, we changed this earlier. Now let's change the number to 50, for example. And now let's run it. All right, so we can see Brian Holland right there. You can see Dr. Oz right there. See Dr. Fauci right there and so on. So basically, they're just going to appear somewhere in the authorship there. Okay, so let's go back up to this area right here and find a solution to better understand the XML structure. All right, so we're going to import another module here. And this comes included with Python, so we don't have to worry about using pip to get it. Don't worry, I'll have this in the code that I gave you in the video description. And we're going to use this element tree here. And I think you're going to like what you see. Let's check this out here. So I have to put in a little bit of code here. 
But root was ET elementary. A reference to PMID, that's that unique identifier for an article. All right, so now we're going to loop through this and let's print this and let's get an idea of what this looks like. All right, let's run this and get a look at this. I think you're going to like this though, for real. I think it's going to make it a lot easier, especially if you're not that familiar with XML. This is the magic right here. Okay, that looks a little crazy, but let's uh, let's take a look at this. Let's see. Let's just do this side by side. We can take a look. I feel like that'll just make it a little bit easier that way. All right, so look at title right here. So we want to find article title. And there we go right there, article title. Take a look at the abstract. Okay, so we want to look at abstract text right here. Okay. And that's under this parent nest right here. So abstract, abstract text. So you can see right there and right there. So you can see there is so much stuff in here. We have mesh terms in there. Look at all these citations. So if you want to count how many citations, there's just a lot of stuff to get in here. So I think you kind of get the picture here. So anyway, give you one last glance at this, and this is just for one article. So you can just pick out the pieces that you want, but I got a template here for you right here. I'm going to provide the code and hopefully this should help you out a bit. Anyway, let me know what you thought about this video. I could do another one where we focus on making an H index or we could look at citations. There's lots of things we can do. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks again so much for watching and I'll talk to you all soon. Take care.